It's time for everybody's favorite segment. It's the mailbag where we're taking your questions and topics and getting them answered and discussed right here on Locked On Golden Gophers. Locked On Golden Gophers, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb. I'm the host of the podcast. Happy to have you along. And you can follow me at Kane at for Kane Robb video on Twitter and check out the podcast at LO Golden Gophers. Now, be sure to send any questions for future mailbags to those Twitter accounts or drop them in the comments on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, be sure to check out the podcast on YouTube. We're just getting it up and rolling over there. Be sure to subscribe. This channel is for you, the Gopher fan, and I want to make sure we cater it to what you want to hear. I mean, I'm going to add a little personality. I'm going to add a little flavor to it. Hopefully you enjoy that, but it's for you. So be sure to let me know what you're thinking. Leave a five-star review anywhere you get your podcasts. And I, first off, before we jump into the meat of this thing, I want to apologize for any of the technical issues that might have happened yesterday with yesterday's episode. Um, We're still working through some kinks here, but in the end, all of this working through the kinks is going to be of benefit when we are out here with the great production, the great podcast that you are looking for on your Golden Gophers every single day. So I'm apologizing for that ahead of time, but we're going to get there sooner than later, very soon. And the theme intro music, we're going to get that old one from the sound podcast that we did the past two weeks. We're getting it on here on the video as well. So don't worry, we got that coming back for you. But before we jump into the mailbag, I just want to bring up our most recent commit, who I'm more than sure you have heard of so far that he joined the Gophers basketball team. And that's Talon Cooper. He's from Moorhead State. He is exactly what we needed in this rotation, in this roster for the Golden Gophers. Great get by Ben Johnson. Great complimentary piece to fit with the pieces that we already have in place with Dawson Garcia, Jamison Battle, Parker Fox. Cooper is going to fit right into that. He's exactly what we needed. If you are an NBA fan, think of what Chris Paul brings to the Suns. Now, I'm not calling Cooper Chris Paul. Chris Paul is an all-world Hall of Fame, talented point guard. And I'm not saying Cooper can't get there, but we're not putting him in the same vein. What I'm saying is the role that Chris Paul plays for that team and the way he sets his teammates up consistently runs the offense flawlessly, and really helps the engine run. That is what Chris Paul does to a T. And that is what Cooper can bring to our offense, which is exactly why I had mentioned he was my number one hope for a recruit to commit after we learned Dawson Garcia had joined our program. Those two are going to pair well together. It's going to pair well with Jamison Battles game. I am just stoked absolutely stoked that we got him to commit. We have two roster spots left, two scholarships left to fill out the roster. And honestly, I think they both need to go to three-point shooting. The Gophers did not shoot the three enough last season. And the only person on the roster of note that really knocks the three down outside of battle Garcia can hit it consistently. I'm not going to call him a straight-up three-point shooter, but he's he's a threat from there, so I'm not going to put it past him. But the only shooter-shooter on this roster is true freshman Braden Carrington joining the team from Park Center. Now, we've yet to see how he'll transition into this college game and if he'll pick it up quick enough to get rotational minutes or heavy minutes. So it's hard to predict that having not had any 
inkling whatsoever of the college game so far from Braden Carrington. So we need to bring in two more shooters that can stroke it from deep. Three and D players, they would be perfect. That would help us fill this roster out. And I think we would be a very complete team ready to compete in the Big Ten. So Cooper, great get. I just wanted to touch on that really quick. Now let's jump into the mailbag. And we're going to do one question on a similar note while we're on the basketball topic. And then we got a couple hockey questions and a football question for you tonight as well. But I'm going to tie the first question since we've already been on the basketball topic. The question is, do you think Ben Johnson is going to run a short bench again next season? And that is an absolutely phenomenal question. Honestly, I think to start the year, it, it is going to be a short bench. And I think that the opportunity could present itself to be more of an extended rotation, but it really depends on how those guys at the end of the bench step up behind the scenes in practice. Now, what I am seeing when I'm looking at our roster, so I have it off to the side here, Cooper's going to start at point guard. That's unquestioned. Like, write it in, lock it in. He's starting at point guard, averaged six assists per game, was one of the best in the nation in assists this past season. He's going to be, again, exactly what we need to help funnel and control the system and help feed and set up our two, three main scoring playmakers in Battle, Fox, and Garcia. So lock Cooper in and then lock those three guys that I just said in. If they're fully healthy, I think Battle, Fox, and Garcia are all locked into that front lineup and they'll fill out the front court, which leaves most likely, unless we play a really bigger lineup with less consistency shooting and spreading the floor out, I think it leaves a guard position open, which means right now, who do you pencil in between um, Carrington, Tyam, Enan's more of a forward, Henley's more of a forward, Ola Joseph's more of a forward, and the two walk-ons, I'm... Look, much love to walk-ons, much love to the guys who put in the work, put in the grind, and consistently are there for their teammates. But those guys are not likely going to see heavy minutes or rotational minutes. So I'm not I'm not putting them in my anticipated lineup right now, which is why I think these next and last two scholarship spots are probably going to look at shooters because you can slot. Right now I have Carrington slotted in at the two guard. But that's hard to ask of a three-star freshman from Minneapolis coming in and stepping in and playing those minutes immediately. Now, could he do it? Absolutely. He won Mr. Basketball for Minnesota. I'm not putting anything past him. I think, I truly believe Carrington is going to get some sort of play next year. He's going to get in the rotation and how much time he gets in the rotation will really be up to how he produces in training camp, in offseason, and in those first few games. Does he shine, or does he need time to fully grow and develop? I think with the current roster, the opportunity is there for him. So I think right now Carrington is penciling in of the two until we figure out what these last two scholarship spots are. I think Cooper's penciled in at the one. You got both your guards, and then I'm locking in those three scores, Parker, Fox, and Bell. So there's your starting five. So what does that leave for a bench and our rotation? Now, I'm going to tell you straight up, Trayton Thompson is 1,000% in that lineup and in that rotation. If he's not, guarantee transfers. Guarantee. No doubt. Train Thompson's going to be in the rotation. He's going to see valuable minutes. And I think he'll be an important piece for us, especially depth in that front court. As far as height and hopefully rebounding, those could be a flaw for us. Those areas could be problematic. But I think he is a piece that is going to be essential in filling that need. So Trayton Thompson, likely one of the first six in the rotation, and then honestly, Tyam and Enan, 
I don't think that they are guaranteed time. I don't think they're guaranteed a spot on the floor, a minutes in their rotation, unless they truly earn them in both the camp and the offseason prep and in those early games when they do get opportunities. Enan saw some time last year prior to injury, but he never was really able to develop more from those spot minutes. And the thing is, I think it's going to be the same vein. Same vein. I mean... We have more talent on this year's team. And if you couldn't crack it into last year's, unless you take a massive leap and a massive step and a massive progression, it's just not going to be given to you. It's not going to be handed to you. I think that's one thing that Ben Johnson has proven so far is that you are going to earn your minutes with your play. And I value that. I respect that. I absolutely respect that. So those two, I don't think, are going to be forced into minutes. They have to earn them. And as it sits right now, I, I, don't, I wouldn't think they would have a lot of minutes. So then that leaves the other three um, incoming freshmen for this class. Now, if I'm being completely honest with you, Henley, I think it's going to take him a year or so. He's extremely raw talent he's got the length he's got the size he's got the athletic ability but i think it is going to take some time to develop into his frame his size and be the athlete we know he can be and that's not going to be year one right away so i think that he develops behind guys like fox guys like garcia guys like battle so that way in two to three years down the line, he's stepping right into that value of a role. Now, I'm not saying he's not going to play for two to three years. What I'm saying is he learns from those guys over these next two years and heavily maybe doesn't play at all or tiny bits of minutes here and there this year. I would lean towards not at all, to be honest. And then next year, after a year of playing and training with these guys, he works his way into rotational minutes, maybe eight to 10 minutes a game, just helping out. Then a year from then is when you start to see guys like Garcia done with eligibility, uh, Cooper done with eligibility. So Fox, I believe, would be done with eligibility at that point. And Henley jumps in. Henley takes on a key role. So I think he's going to be a developmental guy. I think Ola Joseph is in a very similar vein. He's a little bit more polished. So I think if he got some minutes here and there this year, I wouldn't be surprised. But I don't think he's going to be earning large, heavy minutes, barring injury. If everybody stays healthy, everybody plays the roles that are likely bound for them, I think Ola Joseph and Henley both develop more this year rather than playing rotationally. But the final freshman outside of Carrington, Pharrell Payne, I think he is going to be a key rotational piece. So if you look at it, I mean, he's a big man. He's going to be filling those that same void I was speaking of with Thompson he's going to fill that void a lot. He's very aggressive, very physical, a beast on the boards, and slams it with authority. Pharrell Payne's getting minutes his freshman year. No doubt. Little to no doubt. So with that, that leaves us those five starters at the moment and then Trayton Thompson and Pharrell Payne. That's seven players getting key minutes. Now, if we bring in two shooters, two guys that can play 3 and D, be on the wing, and really contribute, then that could give us up to a bench of nine, which is possible, which would give us that larger bench. But also, if you bring in two shooters, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't then force Carrington in. They don't force him into more minutes, more rotation, but lets it come naturally, in which case it's up to him and how he performs and how he does. So I think anywhere from seven to nine is likely what we'll see in our rotation depending on who we fill these last scholarships with. Again, great question. And before we move to our next set of questions, we are going to talk about our friends over at Athletic Greens. All right, I want to tell you about our friends at Athletic Greens because it's actually a product that it's it's been great for me. I personally take it. I take it one scoop every day before I go to work out in the mornings. And why do I do that? Why did I even get started with this? Because I have a wedding coming up. I knew I wasn't eating the best. I just 
didn't feel healthy gut wise, was having stomach problems. And this felt like a reset to me. It gives me more energy as well. But the biggest perk for me was the gut health. But the things that really stood out to me was it's lifestyle friendly, no matter what lifestyle you are. And I feel like that stands out a lot to me, having family members that are vegetarian, family members that are gluten free. I mean, I even have friends that are dairy free. So it's just like my sister has a dairy allergy in a certain sense. So this, it, it's good for all of those types of lifestyles. It's paleo, keto, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, you name it. It's, it's friendly to those sensitivities. And that is absolutely astounding. I love that. They care about all people and making it better for everybody. Now, on top of that, it only costs you less than $3 a day. So you're investing in your own health. That's, that's less than your typical caribou, less than your typical Starbucks, your cold brew. That habit, scrap it. This gives you energy as well. It's better for it. It supports your immune system. It's better for your gut health, as I said, which was the reason that got me on it. But it's only $3 a day at that point less than three dollars a day so i mean overall I, I truly like this product i think you should try it as well and right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition it's just one scoop in a cup of water every day simple as that you can do it the first thing when you wake up there's no need for a million different pills and supplements. This is the perfect way to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash college and take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, so let's jump back into the questions. And this next one was a hot one. Had two people ask about this. And it's what's the latest on Ryan Johnson? And I also had someone ask, the status on Sammy Walker as well with the Gophers hockey program. Now, Ryan Johnson, when we talked about him last week on last week's show, recapping the hockey team and who we expect to stay, who we expect to go, he was a 50-50 split for me. Ryan Johnson was someone that was extremely difficult for me to predict. Him and Lacombe. I also mentioned Lacombe. I was a little bit more positive that he was likely going to come back, and thankfully he did. I feel like a prophet, you know, I had just willed that into existence. LeVar Ball would be proud. Speak it into existence. But I do think that Ryan Johnson is still a toss-up, but the more that I think about it, the more I think it's likely that Ryan Johnson returns to the Gophers for one final year. And here's why. Not only does it give him a chance to lead a competitive team towards the national championship once more. I mean, we have one of the best recruiting classes that we've had in years coming in on top of Nye's coming back, on top of Faber coming back, Close is still in the goal. I mean, that's just a handful. I mean, we still got Chaz Lucius coming back from injury. We got Tristan coming back. I mean, this team is absolutely stacked, talented from top to bottom. And the only thing it truly needs is some veteran leadership. And we have Lacombe coming back. But I think Ryan Johnson would be a great veteran leader to add to this team again. And so you, you add up that, but not only that, he also would be an undrafted free agent if he returns after the season, he would be an unrestricted free agent next year. Not undrafted, pardon me. Unrestricted free agent next year, being three years since he was drafted. 
which really gives him the power. It doesn't make him sign with the Sabres. It puts the power in his hands and allows him to pick the best opportunity for him, taking control of his career after college as opposed to the early draft pick that he was. I think that that means a lot to athletes these days, especially in different sports. But I just feel like having the power and the control to choose your best option, that's powerful. And I think the fact that it's taken this long and we still don't have an answer on sabers or returning, that's pretty significant. I think that's significant in both Ryan Johnson and Sammy Walker's cases. But Sammy Walker's a little bit different. We're going to jump into that. But if I had to guess, I think that Ryan Johnson's coming back. I think the only risk that he really has is that he could maybe lose time to great recruiting, a great great recruiting class that we have coming in. But I don't see Coach taking the minutes from him. And a lot of our recruiting class also, like the stronger prospects, many more of them are in that forward center position as opposed to the defense. So I think Ryan Johnson's sit, spot is a little bit more safe. Now enter Sammy Walker, where, again, it's extremely interesting that he's waiting so long and hasn't made a decision, especially since he was a senior this past year. It's interesting that it's taking so long for him. But I do think our incoming freshman recruiting class is much stronger at the forward position, the forward center position, than it was at defense. And so I think this could be a riskier move for Sammy Walker in the option for him to return, if he wants to return to build his prospect value, I think that that could take a hit if all these young guys are getting the opportunity to play. Now, Logan Cooley has mentioned a couple times he might want to make the jump right to the NHL, which would kind of take one of those most talented pieces away from us. But can you wait that long? Can you wait that long to figure out if you want to make the jump at that point? I feel like that's way too late in the game and you can't wait on that. So Sammy Walker, I would not be surprised if he goes pro. I think I would lean towards him leaving the team and going pro next year and taking his shot to prove himself and the prospect that he was considered. So I feel like he's going to leave, but the weight does leave some doubt. And that's where I'm at with both of those guys on the hockey team. Now, the final question I want to dive into, and again, Send those questions our way over at Locked On Golden Gophers. Whether you send it on Twitter, you can send it on email, you can post it in the comments below. But the more questions we get, the quicker we can fly through these and get as many of the questions in as possible. And I want to give you good answers on them all. But I also want to answer all the questions you have, all the topics you have. So get those our way. But let's dive into the last question, which is about the Gopher football team. And it's, do you think the offensive scheme with the current players will be able to recreate the success we experienced in 2019 with Kirk Soraka coming back? And if so, who may thrive and who may have some issues? Now, I do think, first things first, we are going to see more passing. It's going to be more of a balanced attack. So that aspect of 2019, 1,000%. Yes. We will see more balance. We will see more success, especially in the passing game. But don't expect a copy-paste. Don't expect it to just be the same. Look at all of our receivers. Our receivers have different playing styles. And that's something wide receivers coach Matt Simon mentioned in a recent article with Gopher Illustrated was that he was talking to Chris Ottman bell and he was basically telling him, you don't have to be Tyler Johnson. You don't have to be Rashad Bateman. Be Chris Ottman Bell. And 1,000%. Like, don't be the guys and try to fill their shoes. Be you and let's develop off of you and your game and your play style and your strengths and your weaknesses. I'm 1,000% in agreement with wide receivers coach Matt Simon. But... It's hard to hear that as a player and actually put it to practice. You get caught up in the habit of mimicking and of going through the motions, going through the repetitiveness 
that you start to lose track of what your strengths are sometimes. And I think that happened with our Gophers last year. The big word that the coaches had mentioned across the board, Fleck, Soraka, Simon, all of them mentioned consistency, and we were too inconsistent. And I agree 1,000%. So, again, don't expect a copy-paste. Don't expect Chris Hotman bell to be Tyler Johnson and Dalen Wright to be Rashad Bateman and Daniel Jackson to fill the role that Chris Hotman bell played. No, it's not going to be that. And Kirk Soraka is too smart. He's not. He knows that people are going to be watching our tape from 2019. Everybody in the – you as a fan know Tanner Morgan was on our 2019 team. Chris Amon Bell was on our 2019 team. We featured three receivers heavily in that. We still had a running game. Kirk Soraka was OC. Everybody, if you, if we the fans know that, if we the analysts know that, what do you think these coaches are doing? They're breaking down cut-ups. They're breaking down film. They're looking at reports of formations, of shifts, of personnel. They're breaking this stuff down to a T. You don't think they're going to go back and take the 2019 film and break that down hardcore knowing Kirk Soraka's back? Absolutely. That's going to be one of the first things they do. Shoot. In my When I was a video coordinator, if we knew X coach was coming from X program, we're pulling all of their stuff from that program, and we're diving in hard. We're going to look at the tendencies. We're going to look at the shifts. And then you, get, you catch that team middle of the year. Not only do you use some of that tape, but then you use the tape they've been putting on the first few weeks of the season, and you really hone in on those tendencies. You really hone in on those changes, those packages, the downs and situations. Hardcore. So they're absolutely going to look at that tape, and Kirk Soraka knows that. He's going to have to make adjustments. And I think he's kind of honed in on Brevin Span Ford, and his usage is going to be a big adjustment. That's going to be a guy that we use differently, and he's going to be a key piece. And I love that because he's an athletic freak. He's built like the per not the perfect tight end, but man, he's built a, like a tight a tight end freak who can go up and compete with the jump ball. He's got hands. He played receiver in high school, but he's 6'7", 270. Sorry, what? 270. And that's not like overweight weight. I'm talking like 270 built, yoked, strong. So he's going to get used. Hopefully, more than even what we're anticipating. Hopefully, he is a hardcore feature. I think he should be, especially in the red zone. The run game is going to be strong. I think the main thing that I think a player that is going to thrive from this, if we use him the correct way, is going to be Dalen Wright. I think Dalen Wright could vault himself into an NFL draft prospect if he buys in and he gets consistent. The man's got sticky fingers. The man's a solid route runner. Great build. Athletic is all get out. Every coach has sang his praises in certain aspects of his game. It just comes to consistency. And he had a lot of stuff going on off the field, and we have all been told about that. And probably not to the extent at which it, how much it actually impacted him and affected him in his mental off of the field. I mean, Dalen Wright, he's not Tyler Johnson. He's not Rashad Bateman. He is his own receiver. And he has his own strengths that I don't think either of those two receivers had. I think he's a completely different receiver, and our coaches are smart enough to figure that out, especially Kirk Soraka. I think we're going to see him pop off and be featured a lot. I actually think the way that we feature Dalen Wright and Brevin Span Ford is going to be completely different than what we saw in 2019, but it's going to be beneficial and give us an advantage. I think Daniel Jackson, from what I've read from Matt Simon, what I've heard from Matt Simon, it sounds like Daniel Jackson is a lot more the underneath quick routes, 
like we saw from Tyler Johnson from time to time pretty often. I think Daniel Jackson can fit that role. So if you think it's going to be a copy-paste, then I would expect Daniel Jackson to pop off. But I don't think it's going to be a copy-paste. I think it's going to have some very unique differences, but those aren't bad differences. So expect a strong run game. Expect a Tanner bounce back. It might not be the 2019 Tanner, but it will be a bounce back nonetheless. And personally, I would expect Dalen Wright and Brevin Spanford to thrive. Chris Hotman Bell is a great receiver. He's a great piece. I don't think he is going to be the focus in this offense, and I don't think he is going to vault himself into the next level talks, if that makes sense. I think he's going to be a great piece. He's going to be an important piece of the team. I think he's going to bring consistency like we've asked. I think he's going to bring upside to some games and have some blow-up games, but I don't think he is what this offense is going to be built around. Whereas 2019 was built around Tyler Johnson and Rashad Bateman. Chris Hotman Bell is going to be a piece that we use, but I don't think it's going to be built around him. Daniel Jackson's an interesting piece. But again, personally, I believe Brevin Ford, Brevin Spanford and Dalen Wright in the passing game are going to be huge next year. And the running game is going to be very prominent, very, very prominent. So that's where I'm at with this offense. I don't really see issues. Um, I think Chris Amon Bell might not get used as much as fans want him to be. So that, I guess, maybe you could see as an issue. But I think it's going to be fun. I think we're going to have a good bunch. And I think one of the things I'm most looking forward to is, do we feature Zach Evans or do we sit him and try to save a year of eligibility? Those are going to be big, real big. Uh, so before we close the show, uh, I want to talk to you about our friends over at bet online because the NFL is having a draft. I don't know if you heard that. Did you hear that? Me? I just found out, but the NFL is having a draft. Hopefully three of our gophers, if not more, get drafted in said draft. But what you can do is you can head over to Bet Online and you can check out the numbers and sports betting trends for that draft. The numbers on who's going to be the first cornerback off the board, who's going to be the first O lineman off the board, who's going to be the number one pick off of the board, how many wide receivers going in round one. You can catch all of those trends and all of the numbers for sports betting at Bet Online. NFL draft, not for you. They've got hockey over there. NBA playoffs over there. MLB just kicked off. They've got those numbers for you. Head on over to Bet Online. See, Bet Online is your continued source for all things sports wagering information from the draft to playoffs to esports to live betting and more. Head on over to the website today to learn more about the trends and actions. Bet online where the game starts. So I just want to quickly touch on these Thursdays and the Wednesday segments. Right now we have consistent segments set up for both off-season and in-season that we are going to have guests that go for on Wednesdays and mailbag on thursdays now i want to fill these up for you i want to get these going i want these to be entertaining i want these to be fun i want these to answer your questions you right there i am looking at you in your optic stems i'm looking into your soul that's a little weird sorry i won't go there but i'm looking at you because i want to answer your questions so please check us out on twitter at lo golden gophers Send your questions there. You watching on YouTube? Look at those comments right there. Drop some in there asking whatever questions you have. Actually, if it's not even a question, you don't have a question. You just like listening to what I have have to say and have to spew out. That's fine. Do you have other Gophers analysts you like to listen to? Do you 
have teams that you want to hear us talk trash with. Any of that. We'll do crossover pods with the other Locked On podcast. We've got something in the work with Locked On Badgers coming up here. We're going to have some fun things, do a little cut crossovers with them. Maybe we'll have a little axe battle of our own. Sounds nice. I can get with that. Of course, we're bringing it home. Sorry, Badgers fans. It's a new era. But uh, I'm in the works of trying to get Ryan Burns on the podcast. Daniel House, I know a bunch of you listen to him. Check him out on Twitter and the great things he does with Gopher Guru and Gopher Hole. We're going to get them on the podcast. I want to get coaches on this podcast. I want to try to get Brevin Span Ford and some of the players on the podcast. I want to get some of the women's coaches, the women's basketball coaches on the podcast. I want to talk to hockey players. We're going to, I want to get hockey analysts. Look, I love hockey. I'm getting into hockey and it's been extremely fun process for me. I want to bring someone that's been on hockey their entire life, been on Gophers hockey for years and years. And I want to bring him, them on here, him or her, and ask them your questions you're dying to know. I want to tee it up and give them the floor and let them speak and give you that entertainment, but get your questions answered. So please follow the podcast, give it a five-star review wherever you listen, and subscribe on YouTube. That button right there, right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. That red one. It says subscribe on it. Press that and get ready for the Locked on Golden Gophers podcast. This is Kane Rob. I am your host. I'm a former video coordinator and recruiting assistant for a football program at the collegiate level. It was a blast, but we're moved on from there. And now what we're doing is we're talking Gophers. So I want to give you the full experience behind the scenes. As we get into the season for football, especially, I'll break down reports of what we, like what we would look at what we would be breaking down, what we would be diving into. We're going to get into all that technical stuff and give you, the viewer, more knowledge as well. I look forward to this so much. We're going to build this thing, and it is going to be a blast. So tell your friends, tell your family members, tell your wife, tell your husband, whoever that may be. Bring them to the Lockdown Golden Gophers podcast. Let's kick it off. We're going to sign the show off. It's been great. I've had a blast. Thank you for making the Lockdown Golden Gophers your first listen. And let's make it a first listen tomorrow. Tomorrow we're talking about uh, NFL draft prospect Blaze Andries. And then we're going to talk about what the Gophers have to do to stay competitive with the NIL in full swing. Check that out tomorrow. This is Kane Rob signing off. Have a good one.